Hello and welcome to the first part of our FPS game tutorial series. My name is David and I am the animator here at Infima Games, also known as the art guy or blender person. Uh, basically I do a lot of things, but mainly I animate. If you haven't already, please check out the introduction video. And in this part, we are going to be rigging the gun model. And this is the model that we're going to be using for our game project in Unreal Engine. The model that I'm going to be using today is an AAC Honey Badger Assault Rifle that I found on Sketchfab and it is created by Tasty Tony, so please go check out their work. I'll put a link in the description for that so you can check it out. And I'm also going to include the credits in the actual folder for the source files. And you don't have to use this exact model if you don't want to. If you have some other model they prefer, you can of course use that, it's totally fine. For the Blender parts of this tutorial, I have already prepared a zip file that contains the starting files as well as a nice folder setup. So before we do anything else, please make sure you download these files by using the link in the description. And once you have them downloaded, you need to unzip them using a tool like uh, WinRAR or 7-Zip or something like that. And once you have it downloaded and unzipped, you're going to get this folder set up here. So we have the exported, which is the folder we're going to be exporting our files to. So it's empty at the moment. Then we have animations, which is the folder where we will place our uh, Blender animation files into. We have meshes, which contains the mannequin and uh, the honey badger model by Tasty Tony. And then we have the rigs folder that contains the mannequin rig, which is pre-made for this project. So you won't have to worry about rigging any character for this one, um, because that's a very tedious process and most likely needs a whole tutorial series of its own. So uh, for this part, we're not going to be doing any of that. Uh, we're just going to be using this already uh, set up rig. And finally, we have the textures folder, which contains the mannequin textures, as well as a, a texture for the assault rifle. And the reason I made a texture for the assault rifle uh, is because by default, the model from Sketchfab had a whole bunch of materials assigned to it, which is not super useful when you're making a game, because then in order to optimize things, you need to have everything baked into one texture and one material instead of 20 materials. So I also created a fixed version of the gun model, which is called Honey Badger Material Fix. And it's exactly as the original. The only thing I changed is that I removed the materials and created one material with the texture instead. So that's the one we're going to be using. And with that being said, I'm just going to get straight into it here. And of course, we're going to be using Blender for this tutorial. So if you haven't already, please download Blender from uh, blender.org. And I'm also going to be putting a link to that in the description. And the version I'm using is Blender 4.0.2. So you need to use at least that version or higher. Um, because otherwise there might be some inconsistencies here. So please uh, download the latest version if you can. Um, and yeah, let's just start rigging the gun. So I'm going to open up Blender here. And as always, we want to delete the default objects by pressing A to select everything and then X and uh, delete. And uh, let's also save this file so we don't forget by pressing Control S and uh, then going to our folder here and rigs and assault rifle or whatever you call the folder and we can just name it rig underscore uh, i'm just going to call it assault rifle but you can call it whatever you like for this one and now there's a few settings we want to change that's not correct by default and the main one being the scale of the scene. So we want to go to units here in the scene settings and change that to 0 0.01 like this. And the reason we're doing this is because there, as far as I know, there's a scale difference between Unreal Engine and Blender. And I don't know if that's still an issue, but I did test this before and I got some errors when I imported using the default scale. Um, and this seemed to work fine. So we're just going to go with this one for now. 
And then we also want to change the grid scale because as we can see now, everything became very large. And we can do that by going here and setting the scale to the same, 0 0.01. And we also want to change the view distance because if we zoom out, we can see that there's this fog, which is a bit annoying. So we can change that by pressing N and going to view and setting the clip start to 0 0.01 and the end to about 50, which usually works pretty well. There we go. Now we can import um, the gun model and we can do that by going to file import and pressing FPX because we're importing an FPX file. So it's important to make sure that it's in the correct format. And this one is in meshes, assault rifle, and I'm gonna be using the material fix version. So press that and then import. And by default, this uh, model has some objects attached to it. So it has an armature, camera and light, which we don't need. So we can go ahead and select everything except for the model. And we can deselect it by holding down shift and right clicking twice. And then we can just delete uh, everything else. And now we are gonna notice that the, <laughs> the gun became really tiny and kind of awkwardly rotated, which is fine. Uh, that's pretty normal when using models from the internet. Um, so let's fix that. Uh, first, I wanna rename this because it's currently called cube 05, not very descriptive. So let's click that and press F2. And let's just call it uh, SK uh, Assault Rifle. Oops. And in this case, SK stands for Skeletal Mesh, which is like the, it's like the Unreal uh, naming convention that we use. And let's enable the Move tool. And we can also see here in the, the object properties that all these settings are kind of messed up. It's not really centered. It's weirdly rotated. It has some inconsistent scaling. So these are all things that we have to fix. And we can start with centering the location by pressing Alt-G. And we can also apply the scale so it's uh, consistent by pressing Control-A and choosing Scale. And that's going to make it uh, like a uniform scale. And we can also rotate it because currently it is uh, a bit awkward. And by the way, I'm using a numpad to change the camera views. So if you want to kind of lock it into a specific view, you can use the numpad for this. So I'm just going to go to the side view and rotate it by 90 degrees by typing in R90. And then we can also apply the rotation like that. And now we need to fix the scale of this um, because by default, the gun is not scaled to Unreal Engine. So it's going to be either very tiny or very large. We don't really know. And a good way to scale it is by using a reference. So in this case, I'm going to be using the mannequin model as a reference. And we have this in the folder, so we can just go ahead and import that by going to File, Import, uh, FBX, and locating the, the Manny folder, and then just importing the SK Manny simple. And as we can see, this is huge. So there's some, uh, some fixing to do here. Um, we can start by deleting the armature since we don't need that. So just right click on it and X delete. And we can also delete this empty object here, which doesn't really serve any purpose. So let's delete that. And now we can just start scaling the model up to match the hands of the, guy, uh, of the character. And we can also tell that the rotation is wrong. And the reason for this is because in Unreal Engine, the forward direction is X, like X positive. And in Blender, it's Y that is the forward axis. So we also need to rotate the gun 
to be facing the same direction as the as the character. And we can do that by pressing selecting the gun and then pressing R Z ninety. Sorry, negative ninety. And enter. And that's gonna be correct. And we can also apply the rotation again. And now I'm just gonna move it up here to the hand to get a better idea of the placement. I'm just gonna like temporarily rotate it to fit the hand as well. And then just scale it so that it kind of uh, fits the hand and looks correct. And we can also enable the local uh, transforms here, so it's a bit easier to rotate because currently it's set to global, which causes it to rotate like this, which feels a bit weird. So let's just go ahead and enable local. And something I usually use as a reference is the grip. So I try to like imagine that the hand should just just about cover the grip. So something like that. Because if you imagine the, the fingers kind of closing in on the grip, it shouldn't really stick out too much at the bottom. Like it shouldn't be, you know, like this. It, or also it shouldn't be too small, so it shouldn't be like this, but somewhere uh, in between. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And another trick we could use, if we want to be even more precise, is that we can actually use the measuring tool. So there's a measuring tool in Blender that gives you like perfect like millimeter measurements if you want. <laughs> um, and I did some research and I think this gun is about 740 millimeters long. Um, and if there's any gun experts watching this, please let me know in the comments if that's correct. But <laughs> but I think it's uh, it's pretty accurate. So I'm going to just reset the rotation. And then I'm going to use the measuring tool here to drag out a straight line from the back of the gun to the front. And OK, it's a bit too big, so we want to make it around this size. I'm just going to scale it to this line here, which is uh, around 740 millimeters. Okay, something like that. And then we can check with the hand again, see if it uh, looks okay. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with the scale now, which means that we can delete the mannequin since we won't be needing it now. And let's also reset the rotation by pressing Alt R and also the location by Alt G and apply the scale like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and fix the pivot of the gun. So usually I want the pivot to be around like the slightly above the grip, so around here. And the reason we're changing the pivot is because this is the point where the gun will rotate from uh, later on. So right now it's rotating from the center, which creates kind of like awkward movement sometimes. So it's better to keep it uh, around the grip. And to do that, just go into edit mode by pressing tab and selecting everything by pressing A. And then we can just drag it by uh, pressing G. And I'm going to place the pivot around here. It doesn't have to be like super accurate, but just like a rough, rough area. And before we start creating the actual rig, I'm going to also separate some parts of the model. So I'm going to start by separating the, separating the magazine. 
And the reason for this is because uh, our usual setup in Unreal Engine has the mag separate from the gun. And this is good because you might want to like change the you know magazine model or you might want to add some bullets to it or something. And having it as a separate mesh makes this a lot easier. And to do that, we go into edit mode again. And then we select only the mag by hovering over it and pressing L. And that's going to only select this part. Um, but I think this one also has some bullets inside that we want to include. So we also want to select the bullets. And this can be a bit tricky, but you just have to like um, select, try to select the bullets only by using the same method. I think those are correct. Yep. And then we can separate this selection by pressing P and choosing selection. And let's rename this to uh, SM Assault Rifle Magazine. And in this case, SM stands for Static Mesh, which means that this is not a mesh that is rigged to anything. It's just a its own object. All right. And we also want to create a bullet casing, which is going to be used later on in engine when you're shooting. It's going to be spawning a casing. So to do that, I'm just going to select one of these casing meshes here and duplicating it so we don't mess up the mag and then just separating this part. And I'm just going to name this one Assault Rifle Casing. And then we want to fix the pivot, obviously, so it doesn't rotate from the center. And we can do that by selecting it and going to Object, Set Origin to uh, Center of Mass. And let's do the same for the mag as well. And then we can center this one by pressing Alt-G. And now it's time to start rigging. So first we want to make sure that the 3D cursor is centered by pressing Shift-S and choosing a cursor to world origin. And then we need to create an armature. So to do this, we press Shift-A and locate armature and choose a single bone. And I'm going to, instead of armature, I'm going to call this one Skel, which stands for skeleton and assault rifle. And technically in Blender, these are called armatures, but in Unreal Engine, they're called skeletons. So I'm just going to call it that by default. So it makes it a bit easier when exporting. And this is pretty tiny by default, so we can actually make this a bit larger by going into edit mode and and selecting the bone and making it a bit longer. So we can modify this length value here to something like point, point zero 0.07, zero 0.75, something like that. It doesn't really matter. This uh, this length value won't really affect anything. It's just for like the visual purpose. And now we want to rotate this bone so that it's facing uh, y negative y forward, which will be correct in Unreal Engine, but it won't be correct in Blender. But that's okay <laughs> if that makes sense. So to do that, I'm just gonna select the endpoint here and drag it by using G. And I'm also going to hold control while doing this. So it snaps. Actually, that didn't matter. Um, so to fix this, to, so it's aligned, we can select it, go to bone properties and set the Z value to zero. Like that. And we also want to make sure that the roll value is set to zero, which it is. But sometimes it might be a bit rotated like this or like this. So just uh, make sure it's zero. And this bone we are going to call grip, which will be like the 
the main bone of the rig, which is the bone that all the other bones are uh, parented to. I'm just going to rename that as well. And to make this a bit more uh, easier to see, we can also enable the uh, show in front and axes and names, just so we can kind of uh, at a quick glance tell which one is which. All right, so now we need to figure out which bones we need for this uh, rig. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be rigging the trigger, uh, the bolt and the magazine. So we're going to be needing three bones. Uh, you could also rig the charging handle, handle if you want, or if you want to add like a, a collapsible stock or something like that, you could also rig that. Absolutely. Um, but for this tutorial, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. So I'm just going to rig like the, the main parts here. And to make new bones, I'm just going to copy the grip bone by pressing Shift D. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And for the trigger, I usually place the bone slightly above it so that it rotates from here instead of down here. Like that. And then I'm going to copy it again and place it at the bolt. And this one doesn't have to be perfectly placed, just like in the rough area of the bolt. And I'm going to copy another one and make it the magazine bone. And now we can just rename them. So this is the trigger. This is the bolt. And this is the magazine. And by default, these are not parented to the grip. So if we move the grip, these are not going to follow it, which of course we want them to do. So let's parent them to the grip by selecting them in edit mode and then going to the bone settings and going to relations and just choosing the grip. And do this for, for each bone. And for the magazine bone, we want to base this one on the pivot of the magazine mesh. And first of all, we need to actually fix the, the pivot on this one. And we can do that by setting the center of mass as the origin, which it already was. Okay. I forgot about that. Uh, anyway. And now to align this bone with the mag, we can move the 3D cursor to this selected object by pressing Shift S and 2. And then going back to the bone in edit mode and moving it to the cursor like that. And we have now added all the bones we need for this. And you can just check the hierarchy here, make sure it's correct. So it should be grip at the top and then all the other ones under it. And the next step is to create vertex groups for the model so that each part actually follows its correct bone. And we can do that by selecting the armature and then shift selecting the mesh and pressing control P. Oh, sorry. It's the other way around. So selecting the mesh first and then selecting the armature and control P. And then we want to add uh, empty groups under armature deform. And this is going to add all the bone names. Oh, right. Actually, <laughs> so by default, this model already has uh, vertex groups. So we want to delete these first before we add our own. So to do this, we just press this arrow here and delete all groups. And then we repeat the same process. So add the empty groups. And there we go. So now this only contains our uh, custom bones here. And we can also delete the magazine one since it's not a part of this model, so we won't need it. So to d delete a um, vertex group, just press the minus button here. 
And now we can start assigning these vertex groups to the mesh. And what I usually like to do is I just select the whole model in edit mode by pressing A and then assigning it to the grip. And then to assign the sub or the, the child bones here, I just select the one I want to assign. So in this case, trigger. And then I select only the trigger mesh, so this part. And then assign it to the trigger and remove it from the grip. So now if we select the grip, it should not include the trigger. And let's do the same process for the bolt. So make sure you selected the whole bolt mesh, then remove it from the grip and assign it to the bolt. And now we can try moving the bones in post mode. So selecting the armature and pressing control tab to go into post mode. Or you can also go up here and uh, choose post mode manually. And we can try moving them and they do follow. Yep, they seem to be following correctly. We can just try moving them around a little bit. See that it looks uh, correct, which it does. And this model already had an armature deform applied by default. But in case your model doesn't, I'm just going to show you how to do that real quick. So if we have no uh, deform modifier applied, it's not going to do anything. The bones are not going to follow. So to fix that, we select the model and go into the, the modifiers tab and choose add modifier and then generate sorry, deform and then armature, and then assigning the object as our uh, armature. And uh, then it's going to work again, like this. And since the magazine is a separate mesh, we also want this to be connected to the brig somehow. And we can do this by selecting the mag and deleting this one. And we can also delete the vertex groups on this one since we don't need them. And then I'm going to go to the constraints tab and add a copy transforms constraint. And I'm just going to assign the armature and the bone should be the magazine bone. And now if we move this one, the mag will also follow. Even though it's a separate mesh. All right, so now that we have the, the basic rig set up, we can start improving it a little bit, making it a bit easier to use. And to do that, I'm just going to go into the bone settings here and uh, changing the rotation mode to, to Euler. And I'm also going to lock the scale values because we don't really need that. And I'm going to do the same for the trigger. Locking. And on this one, I'm going to lock everything except, oops, except for the X rotation. Yep. And this way we can only rotate on one axis. So even if we go here and like accidentally rotate it, it's not going to start rotating like sideways or move around in weird ways. And I'm going to do the same for the bolt. So just locking everything except for the Y location. And also for the grip, I'm going to disable uh, scale. And we can also add some uh, constraints on these so that we can kind of limit, limit the movement so that it doesn't move further than this point, which can be quite useful when animating. So you don't have to worry about figuring out the exact placement of it. You can just uh, move it freely. So to do this, select in post mode, select the bolt bone and go to constraints and add a limit location constraint. And then we want to enable the, the Y locations here and also affect transform and also set this to local space. And I'm going to set the maximum Y value to around 0 0.8. And then we can test it. 
Okay, so I messed up. Um, that's my bad. We need to actually apply this to the bone constraint. Sorry, this this was the whole the whole armature, which is bad, so it won't work. But what you can do here instead is selecting the bolt bone again and going to the bone constraints and just do that same thing again, but properly this time. So we're going to add a limit location constraint, enable the Y locations, effect transform and set this to local space, and then set the maximum to 0 0.08. And you might have to, to mess around a bit with this value if it doesn't look right to you. Um, but this looks pretty good. It stops around where you would expect it to stop. Um, we can also make this a bit lower, maybe 0 0.075. And now we can tell that when we're dragging the bone, it actually stops. So you can kind of mess around with it like this and it won't go too far away, which is really nice. And I'm also going to do this for the trigger bone. So in post mode, select the trigger and add a limit rotations instead of location. And I'm going to limit the X rotation on this one and also enable these ones and set this to local space. And I'm going to set the max to around 30. And then we can test it by pressing R. And that seems pretty good. Uh, again, you might you might have to change these a little bit if it doesn't look correct. So maybe it has to be lower, a bit higher. Um, yeah, around around thirty looks good. All right, and as a last step here, I want to add some custom bone shapes to make these bones look a bit more like a rig, because currently you know they're just bones. It's a bit boring to watch, and also. A bit annoying to select because they're going to be like stuck inside the mesh sometimes. Um, so to do that, go into object mode and create a cube by pressing Shift A, mesh and cube. Just going to move that out of the way, and I'm going to call this one CS cube. And in this case, CS stands for custom shape. And to assign this uh, custom shape to the bones, we go into post mode again and select the bone we want to add it to and go to the bone properties. And down here on viewport display, we can choose the CS cube as the object. <laughs> and obviously this is not ideal. So we can enable wireframe, disable scale to bone length, and now we can scale it using these values instead. So I'm just going to make it slightly bigger and kind of fit the, the size of the model. And I'm going to do the same for the trigger. I'm going to scale it. Maybe move it down a little bit. And this just makes it easier to select. So you can you can just like click on the trigger itself and it's gonna select the bone like that. And also for the bolts, do the same thing. And finally for the magazine as well. And you can also hold down shift while dragging this to make it a bit more sensitive if you want to be more precise with this.
and that's looking pretty good. So now we have our rig set up with custom shapes. And let's just go ahead and clean up the hierarchy a little bit because it's kind of messy at the moment. So to do that, we can uh, go back into object mode and select the main model. And with the model selected, press M and choose a new collection. And I'm going to call this one Meshes. Assault Rifle. And we can also go ahead and drag these other ones into it by selecting them and just dragging them under the collection here. And let's do that for the armature as well. So I'm going to create a new group or a new collection and call this one um, Armature Assault Rifle. Like that. And let's also add the custom shape to its own collection. It's gonna call that one custom shapes. And finally creating a new collection. Uh, and we can do that by right clicking here and choosing new collection. And I'm just gonna call this one rig assault rifle. So this is like the, the top folder basically. And we can just drag these other uh, collections into it. Like so. And I'm also gonna delete this one. And to be a bit fancy, we can also give these colors. So um, you can just right click on the collection and then choose any color that you like. This doesn't really affect anything, it's just like a, a visual thing. But it could be nice to to organize uh, stuff by colors. And as a last cleanup, I'm just going to hide the custom shapes by pressing this one. This little checkbox next to it. Um, because the custom shapes are not going to be used anymore. They're just, they're just needed for the bones, really. And we can also go ahead and hide all of these uh, properties that we enable. So remove in front, axes and names. So we just have like a clean looking rig right here. And what we also have to do is make the gun model uh, follow the location of the rig. And it does currently, but when we animate it later on, it won't. And that's because we're gonna be linking this, uh, this Blender file into another file. So we're not gonna be using this file directly, but we're gonna be using a linking method which can break some of the stuff. So it's important that we also make this one follow the rig. And to do that, select the model and go to the constraints tab and add a copy transforms and assign it to the, um, the armature. And we can test this by just moving it around, rotating it a little bit. Um, also test the bones again, make sure that they all do what they're supposed to do and uh, that it looks good. So I'm just going to quickly test it and that seems to work fine. All right, so now that we have finished our rig and set everything up, it's time to export the models. So to do that, we first want to check everything and make sure that the scale and rotation is applied because we don't want to have any uh, inconsistent values here. And they seem fine. Um, right, so the magazine has uh, a location offset, which we can fix by pressing Alt, by selecting it and pressing Alt G. Like this. And now we can start exporting them. So I'm going to start with exporting the casing. So I'm just going to select the casing, can hide everything else for now. And with the model selected, I'm going to go to File, Export, FBX, and I'm going to locate the folder. So in this case, it's exported meshes. And I already have a export preset for this, um, but you can just copy these settings and it's, it's nothing advanced really. Um, you just want to make sure that it's limited to selected objects and the object type should be mesh. And 
that the geometry is set to edge on the smoothing setting. And we don't have to worry about these because we're not exporting any armature or animations at the moment. And then I'm just going to give it the same name as we have in here. So SM Assault Rifle uh, Casing. And then hit Export. And we're going to do the same thing for the mag. So select the mag. And we also have to uh, temporarily disable this one. So it, it's centered. Um, because otherwise, if we export it like this, it's also going to have the pivot in this location. So when you rotate it in engine, it's going to be like rotating from the center, which is going to cause a lot of issues. So we want to make sure this is disabled first. And with this one selected, just do the same thing again. Export FPX. And this one is called the magazine. And now we can enable this one again. And finally, we want to export the rigged model. And for this one, we want to select both the armature and the model. So do that by right clicking the armature and then shift right clicking the mesh. And then just go to the same settings. So file export FBX. And I also have a preset for this one already. It's called the skeletal mesh export, which is basically the same thing, but I also included armature here in object types. And we also want to make sure that the smoothing is set to edge. Because otherwise it's gonna it's gonna lose this like low poly look. It's gonna look a bit smoother in engine, which is not what we want. And this one I'm going to call SK assault rifle. And then just hit export. All right, there we go. And now we can go ahead and just prepare this file to be linked later on in the animation stage. So we can uh, make these visible, or this one, the mag. And we are also going to enable this one, which is, uh, it basically controls if you can select objects or not. And I'm gonna make the meshes collection unselectable, like that so that when you're animating, you don't accidentally select the, uh, the models instead. So we just want this one to be selectable. All right, and that's all for this part. We uh, have a fully functional gun rig that we can use to animate. And um, if you thought this was a bit confusing or if things went a bit too fast, I mean, feel free to go back and rewatch it again. Um, because it can be a lot of information to take in the first time. So it's uh, it's totally fine to go back and uh, and rewatch it. But yeah, I think that's uh, that's about it for this part. And in the next one, we are going to set up the character rig and start preparing it for animation. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye bye.